God was with them. Everything that they needed, God provided. Amen. So, if you, as I said, if you're in Exodus chapter 1, we're going to start at the 6th verse. The 6th verse. And it says, And Joseph died, and all his brothers, and all that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it happen in the events of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us, and so go up out of the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. Amen. And I'm going to read one more verse. Uh, verse 13 says, So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. Now, I was reading this, and something kind of stopped me in my tracks. It was it was like, okay, well, what, what's happening here? And so I went back over and I read it again. And, and, and certain things stood out. First of all, uh, in verse 9, it said, Pharaoh recognized his people. Pharaoh recognized and his people recognized that the children of Israel were more and mightier than them. So they recognized for some reason that they were more and they were mightier. And for some reason, you know, they were there all of this time and everybody was living in peace and everybody was living in harmony. But for some reason, this king just recognized, wait, what's going on? They, 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 they get strong for some reason. And fear came over them. And he said, you know what? In case they decide that they want to help our enemy, let us go in and, and afflict them. Let us go in and, and enslave them. So it said in verse 11 that they set over them taskmasters to afflict them. <clears throat> and then in verse 12, it said the more they afflicted them, the more the children of Israel grew. I said, okay. Hmm. But that's not even what got me. What's, what got me was that for some reason, uh, Pharaoh decided to assign taskmasters to Israel and to enslave the children of Israel. And for some reason, Israel didn't even stand up and fight. They didn't even stand up and fight. They weren't slaves to Egypt. They had never been slaves to Egypt. But for some reason, they just decided, okay, well, they might enslave us, let's just be enslaved. It's like, okay. So I went back a little bit, I read a little bit back in, in Genesis, and nowhere in Genesis did it say that the children of Israel were enslaved to the Egyptians. As a matter of fact, during the time of famine, uh, in Genesis chapter 47, it talked about the Egyptians running out of money, then it talked about them running out of cattle, and then it talked about them selling their lands, and then selling themselves. It said the Egyptians sold everything that they had and became slaves to Pharaoh. But the Israelites were uh, living it up in the lap of, lap of luxury in the land of Ramses and Goshen. They were just living pretty, living strong. Everything that they had, they needed. It never said that the Egyptians had ever enslaved them, had ever enforced hard labor on them or anything like that. The only thing that Pharaoh asked while Joseph was still living is that, you know, hey, 
since they tend since they tend cattle and they're shepherds, you mind if you know if you guys help out with my with my cattle? They ask a favor. Pharaoh asked a favor of them. He never made them do it. He never told them, you know, you have to do it because you live here. This is your going to be your job. He never said anything like that. So it, it was weird to me. Okay, so why did now, if the children of Israel were mighty and they were strong and they were more than the Egyptians, why did they just let them enslave them? What was going on in their minds? It never even dawned on Israel to say, we're not slaves. Why did they stand up for themselves? They, for some unknown reason, just allowed them to enslave them and put them to work. I don't know, were they just used to working? They saw the, Egyptian, the Egyptians come and tell them, you are now our slaves. And they just went along with it. Okay, well. It never said they, they, they asked any questions. Never said they rose up. Never said they even thought about it. They just went along with it. Okay, we got taskmasters now. Okay, well, what are we building, boss? And it was strange. Okay. Well, you sit and you, you living it up. You got, you know, you're living in a lap of luxury. And all of a sudden, someone just comes out of nowhere and says, hey, you got to give up your freedom and come work for me. They didn't even put out a job application. They just told them, hey, come, do this. And they did it. So I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, like, OK, why? Why did they just allow them to do that? Why, don't, why did they not? fight back? Why didn't they why didn't they even ask a question to question the situation or, or think about it? But then it dawned on them. Sometimes that's just how we are. God could be blessing us and we're living the life, we're living the life of luxury. God is making ways out of no way. He's giving us everything that we could possibly need. And for some reason, the enemy comes in, and we just give up everything. Plain as day, he'll send something to try to enslave us or to throw us off our games. And we'll see it coming and just be like, OK. Our discernment sometimes goes right out the window because we see something, and it looks nice. Or it looks easy, or it seems like less work, and we'll just let our guard down. The enemy spies us out often, and, and he, he spies well. He sends he sends spies out to check us out and know exactly what we like, exactly what we want, exactly what bothers us, and then he sends those things to try to throw us off our game. But he sends it in such a way that we just go with it. OK. It seems crazy. But when we look at the children of Israel, they, they, they had everything that they needed. They had a God who loved them. They had a God who was on their side. God had made ways out of no ways. Even in the middle of a famine, they had everything that they needed. They didn't have to spend a dime. But the moment the Egyptians came and said, hey, you're now slaves, work for us, do this. They just went in, went with it. They didn't ask a single question. The Egyptians walked right up to them and told them, put down your slushies, put away that courthouse, get to work. And they didn't even think of saying, hey, what's going on here? Why do I have to do this? What? What reason are you coming here and, and, and imposing this, your will, upon me and I'm just supposed to go with it? 
Now here's the funny thing, we come, a lot of us come from a background where somebody tells us what to do, we're like, what? Who you talking to? <laughs> Who do you think you talking to? Excuse me? me excuse me? <laughs> but we do that, you know? If somebody come up and they tell us something, you know, we flare up, especially if it happened in a place where we think we're, we got it all under control, where we think we got this. Let somebody come on our job and tell us, hey, you've been working there for years, they want to tell no, do, do this this way. Nah, I've been doing this a whole lot longer than you. You know, we tend to flare up when we think, okay. But for some reason, the enemy will, will send something that's simple as a temptation. And it throws us off our game sometimes. We forget everything that God has done for us in the past. We forget everything that God has been doing for us. And we lay down the blessing of the Lord. And we'll even allow bondage to overtake us. We'll allow our, we'll allow our minds to be clouded. We'll allow our judgments to be changed. We'll turn our discernment off. And it's exactly what the enemy tries all the time. I think about, um, now, I'm going to mention this, but I'm talking about me, okay? I'm talking about nobody else. But um, it was a while back, you know, I used to play Pokemon Go. And, you know, Pokemon Go is, it's fun. It's a little fun, you know. You get to go out and pre pretend you Ash catch them, and, you know, you go out and you find your favorite Pokemon and everything like that. And it's fun, you know, you get, you can get caught up in the game and before you realize it, time's ain't gone by. And so for a while I was playing that game and I'm like, you know, I kind of put it on everything else and I, just, and I get caught up in this game. I'm like, wow. I'm like, Lord, well, I said, God, I need you to, to break this out off of me because it's taking up a whole lot of my time. I'm like, okay. So finally I, you know, Stop playing. Some people ask me why I stopped playing it, but <laughs> I felt the need to stop playing it. But then here's the thing, right? So I got rid of Pokemon Go, and then something else that I like came along. WWE Champions, amen? And I would play that on my phone all the time. You know, I'll, you put wrestling and the jewel together and you know, my favorite superstars, okay. So now I'm all up in that, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll do that, you know? This is my one pleasure, I'm gonna play this, you know? And so I get to playing that, and I play it, and, you know, they got the, what they call daily tasks. <laughs> and then you gotta complete your daily tasks in a certain amount of time, or else you miss whatever prizes they wanna give away. And so I would do that, and I would do it day in and day out, you know? You know, I'm, I'm enjoying this game, it's fun, you know? But a lot of times you'll get caught up and before you know it, the day is gone by and you ain't complete nothing. And it's like, hmm, what, what happened? All I did was, you know, do what I needed to do in this game and I finished my, I got my, my star for the day, whatever. But, you know, and I remember Jonathan McReynolds talking about how we can get so caught up on doing stuff that the whole day is gone by and we didn't pray, we didn't tell the Lord thank you, we, you know, we didn't do nothing. But it's just that easy. The enemy will come and slip something that you like and, and, and cause it to walk past you. You like a nice little body and the next thing you know, you look. You did good, Jesus. And next thing you know, you all caught up and your mind is everywhere else but or God. But he uses these things against us to try to take us down and try to take us out. You know, sometimes we could be running for Jesus and the moment a distraction comes or the moment temptation comes or the moment a struggle arrives, we give in to it. We forget that God has been keeping us and we forget the great work that God is doing in our lives. And before we know, we ain't witnessed to nobody, we ain't, we ain't told nobody we love them, you know. We don't forget about our relationship, you know what I'm saying? I mean, talk to your, 
you're special to somebody all day, or, you know, some things get you caught up. And it's real easy for things to get you caught up. Sometimes he'll use work. And something as simple as work will get you so caught up that you forget about the things that you need to do. You know, some people, you know, they don't read their Bibles as much. They don't get to know Jesus as Tyree Dance did. But he uses the simple things. And we, you know, we look at this thing and we look at that and we're just like, wait a minute, you know, why did they just give up? And just allow them to come, and they didn't—they didn't put up any fight. And so, as I said, sometimes it's just something as plain as day that you can see. It's not even something that comes in the spirit realm. It's something that you can see. You know what? If I do this, I know I'm not going to get it accomplished. And you're just like, yeah. but you know, I really want to. You know, it could be something as simple as your favorite TV show. And you start binge watching, and the next thing you know, the day has been gone by. You know, it was my day off, and I should have prayed, but you know, I wanted to watch that show. And it's something that easy that can knock us off our game. But we gotta see the enemy as he comes. Because God is always blessing us. He's given us everything that we need and everything that we want and desire. And the Bible says, if my way, if your ways please me, it says he'll give you the desires of your heart. Sometimes the desires of our hearts are things that we shouldn't have. But God wants to continue to bless us. He wants to continue to, to keep us in the lap of luxury. If you would, if you like porterhouse, he wants you to continue to eat your porterhouse. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. If you like nice cars, if you like nice things, he wants you to continue to have those nice things. Thank you. But you got to remember God. You can't allow certain things to come in and distract you so easily. You can't allow certain things to come in and try to take you out of your place with God. Because even sleepiness, sleepiness will cause you not to want to do anything. And the um, apostle was showing me something earlier where it said, you know, um, I'm still tired from my tiredness yesterday, something like that. <laughs> and it showed Bugs Bunny and, and he was real sleepy. But if you like sleep, the enemy will send it your direction because he knows if you put a nice sleep on you, you ain't going to do nothing. And it's funny, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. To the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We have the weapons and we can use them, but sometimes we just don't want to. Sometimes the temptation is too strong. Sometimes the temptation is just too easy. You know? Oh, she said hi to me now. Call her up. And the one night dog affair. And some, it, it sometimes it's just that simple. You will get caught up in a, in a love affair with something that you, you really don't even have time for. You, you really wouldn't even give it the time of day any other time. But because it just seems that, that just seems so easy. It's just like when if you're dieting or something like that, right? And all of a sudden, you know, somebody came in there and they got that ice cream. You know, you love that ice cream. Amen. What kind of, what? And they just happen to have your favorite flavor, you know what I'm saying? And they bought the gallon for some reason that day. They didn't buy a personal pint or anything like that. They get a cone, but they bought a gallon. And for some reason today, they just want to share. Okay. Now you know I started this time. And it is something that simple that will that'll throw you off your game. You know, we fight the good fight all the time. We fight, sometimes we fight against God. Sometimes we fight against ourselves. And sometimes we fight against those who will come against us. But then sometimes we allow the enemy to slide right on in. Just as easy and just as plainly as possible. And we, we don't even realize it sometimes. But we need to take notice that the enemy uses these simple tricks, these simple traits, 
to try to knock us off our game, to try to take us out of our place. And we gotta acknowledge the enemy and begin to fight against it. I didn't come to bring anything super special, super deep today, but I came to show us how easily the enemy tried to, 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 to slide right on it, to perpetrate. He's trying to knock us, off, knock us off our game, but God wants us to stay blessed. He wants us to stay on our grind, and he wants us to stay running. So we got to open our eyes up and keep our discernment on. And know, hey, does this normally, does this normally, you know, move me out of place? Does this normally? Because the thing about it right now, I had to pray that same prayer about that WWE Champions game. So now I don't play it as much, and I'm not completing my daily tasks. And, you know, I play it still. I can say I gave it all up. I play it, but I don't play it as much as I used to. And what I found out is, you know what? I can get a couple extra hallelujahs in my day. You know, I can, I can read a little more and see what the Lord is saying. Okay. And so, and sometimes you got you have to do that. You have to deny self. And when you become, and when you begin to deny self, you invite God in just that much more. And the enemy has less and less access. Amen. Amen. Apostles Bible is always telling us to shut the door on the things that we allow in our lives or the things that have come against us. You got to shut the door on some stuff. You got to move some things out the way. Slide a little, a little more things to the side. If you know you got a, a cluttering area in your room, you might have to pick up a few pieces. <laughs> you might have to move some things out your way so that you can get a little closer to God, so that you can get in his presence, so that you can love, he can love on you and you can love on him. Because he's always available for a little more love, a little more affection. A little more grace, a little more time. He's readily available for us. And as he said, he wants us to stay in that lap of luxury. He wants us to continue to have, he wants our, our cattle to grow. But here's the thing, even in the affliction, God is still making us mighty. He's still making us strong. But he wants us to be free at the same time. And then as the song says, freedom looks good on you. Try it on. In order to try on the freedom, we got to let go of those things that bind us. As the word says, so easily besets us. Those sins that so easily beset us, we got to let those things go. It's not something that's so hard. It's, but it takes patience. It takes practice. It takes attention. Amen? 